So guys, this weekend's going to be much better than the last weekend. Last weekend, I discovered my TV that came in and was busted. I had to fix some spokes on my tricycle, and I realized I, got, I was getting kicked out of the garage here. This week, I finally found a place to stay. It's over in Campbell, California. It's just on Airbnb. I rented it for August. I'll move there August 1st. I'll probably go over there tomorrow just to talk to the people, just to, just to get to know them. But I'm also looking at some other places to actually rent, like, more self-containable places. Because this the place that I rented is just a room in a house. But I'm also looking at a few places that are, like, small studio apartments and stuff like that. So that'd be kind of interesting. Well, I felt like, now that I actually know that I have a place to stay, I kind of feel like I have the right to have that resetting moment for the weekend. So I went to Weird's the Warehouse and I got some pretty amazing stuff. So here's the stuff. First off, we have this stuff that was outside in a cardboard box, and it turns out this stuff is free. There's a whole big box of old computer shit out at Weird's the Warehouse that's just free. I didn't know that. If I would have known that, I would have been going through there more. But anyway, I got these. These are a bunch of three and a half inch floppy drive, uh, floppy disks in here, and they say "warning, confidential material" or whatever on them. So that's pretty interesting. IBM software. That'd be a good day to archaeology video sometime. I'm gonna pick this up. Just I'm not a Macintosh person, but I think I think I know a few people that do collect Macintosh stuff, so I can like trade that to them for like a DOS something or whatever. I also found this once again. It's for a Mac, but. I think it'll work on the Apple... Oh, no, actually... I really can't tell what it does. I'm... It may work on DOS, but either way, it allows DOS computers, I think, to communicate to Apple stuff. Not really sure, but it comes with a card. It was free. It was like, hell yeah. So now I might be able to take this back to Illinois if, this, if these actually are DOS formatted. Load it onto my my IBM PC and then like print on my printer or something my, my uh, Apple II printer or something I'm not really sure either way that was interesting just for free I felt bad for taking it for free so I gave him a dollar for it also I got this because this oh my god check this out look at it isn't it amazing I've been wanting this Four years. Eight inch floppy disks. Aren't those just amazing? Uh, I love them. This one is dated June 21st, 1976. That's quite old. But as old as my dad. We have Memorex. And of course, we have information terminals now at first i didn't know what information terminals was and it's really weird it's all purple or whatever i kind of like that but then i discovered something information terminals is verbatim verbatim change from inf information terminals to verbatim in 1977 i think or 1978 you know how i'm kind of obsessed with verbatim discs i, I think they look really nice and they're good quality well, now it's like, oh my god, I have like the predecessor to the verbatim disks, the tr information terminals. I love this. This is so freaking cool. But yeah, this is just full of disks. Some of them have labels on them. Okay, it's so test line. I'm not sure. Information. I should probably put these back in there floppies. So I'll find uh, information terminals one. Pat data. Not really sure what that is. Either A, somebody named Pat has data on there, or maybe it's like a pat, almost like a CAT scan. Not really sure if there's a, there's a machine that's like a, a medical terminology for a PAT or something like that. Not really sure. Huh? More information terminals. No label on it, though. Whoa! An actual verbatim 8-inch disc! 
verbatim information terminals. It's like the cross in between two worlds. Oh my god. CPM users group disk 11. Oh my god. I love that. I go with um test line. Well, I want to keep it safe though. If we find a test line one, put it in there. Any other loose? Okay, there are... Oh, yeah, yeah, there are some loose diskette covers. Okay. Information terminal. <gasps> what the fuck? Intel? Oh. Maybe there's an Intel disk in here. God, no. Shit. Oh, well. That would be awesome if there was actually an Intel disk in there. Man. Now I'm going to move the verbatim one into the Intel sleeve because that's awesome. Verbatim, information terminals, and Intel. Look at that. I've wanted these for years. I believe I first started wanting them ever since I saw them in the, the movie War Games from 1982 or 83. I can't remember. But he used them with his MSI 8080. One of my best finds so far. I'd say even better than my Lisa. My Apple Lisa. Then, of course, we have this. It's $5. It is... I already took it apart. It is a TEAC 1.2 megabyte floppy drive. But it has its own housing. It's only $5 at Weird Stuff Warehouse. It's not a bad price at all. Basically, I've been wanting to make an external USB uh, communicated 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive for a long time. And look at this. This one already comes with the power outlet and the ribbon cable. So I'm thinking about getting the Cryoflux floppy disk communication board and using it with this one since this one already has the wires connected up. And then I also got this. I will use this one and get a USB to SCSI hard drive adapter connected on the back. I also have to get a power adapter, unfortunately. But either way, I'll get a USB to SCSI power adapter, or communications adapter, so that then I could plug the adapter into USB, plug the SCSI of the adapter into this, and hopefully access this floppy drive. This is $25, but eh, $25. I was actually looking at a floppy disk, or a floppy drive at Halted, and they wanted like 35 bucks for it. So with this, I got two floppy disks, I have two floppy drives in their cases for the same price as one outside of its case. And this is, I believe, the exact same floppy drive as the other one, the same TEAC -T or TAC or whatever, I don't know. I can't find any information about this Dynafile. And on the back there's really no model number or whatever. But oh well. I probably also have to pick up a Terminator to terminate the SCSI or whatever, but oh well. But yeah, I think these 8-inch floppy disks are the find of the year, almost. That's awesome. I love it so much. Maybe I have an unhealthy obsession with floppy disks, but who knows? Maybe it'll result in me inventing a, like, a modern version of a floppy disk. And over here, we have something else is brewing in my projects. Look at these. These are lithium cells. Duh. But the main difference is these have been ripped out of laptop battery packs and they're all tested and ready to go. Not counting, I also have these 3D printed frames that I made on a DaVinci XYZ that a friend of mine has. And they're really nice cell holders. I actually, I uploaded a 3D model for these to Thingiverse. I'll put a link in the description. You can download it and print it if you want. I've been in debates with people about like, a lot of people want to add little like notches so they can add the strips across but I think it's actually better to have structural stability in it because this is pretty strong than to have the little notches going down to let the wires through because I, I don't mind having to press the wires in and let the wires loop like that unfortunately I've been really trying to make my super or not my super capacitor but my capacitance discharge welder work and it's just 
I don't think it's really ready yet. So instead of holding this back any longer, especially now that I'm going to be moving a lot of stuff, I think I should just go ahead and solder this next battery pack. That will of course be its own series of videos, but yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and solder these batteries together. It's hard to remember what exactly I was going to say in this random bits because it's already been a couple days and I've been, been caught up with this thing. One was that on Saturday, I think it was, I saw a subscriber, or two subscribers actually. I was stopped at a intersection and, and I heard someone yell, hey, do you do that YouTube channel? And I was like, uh, yeah, no super genius. And it's like, okay. We, we talked for like 15 seconds or whatever before the light turned green. It was like, that was really cool. It brings up an issue that I've been having. Now that I'm in the Bay Area, there's a lot more people around me, a lot more possible subscribers. And a couple times, I've gotten messages on, on YouTube like, Oh, hey, I saw you at Weird Stuff Warehouse, but I didn't want to say hi because I didn't want to bug you. You're kind of like a celebrity. It's like, well, thanks for letting me be alone, I guess. If you see me, fucking say hi. I mean, come on. Don't, like, don't let a chance like that go to waste. I mean, you could even be in my Random Bits video. I don't care. But yeah, it, it's kind of annoying whenever people like, Okay, if you're if you're busy or if like you're in a different lane and you're just like, oh, you happen to see me and, and you wave or whatever, that's fine. But if you intentionally do not say hi because you think that, oh, I'm too busy or whatever, even if I'm filming, I don't care. I would love to talk to you, okay? Because I don't really have that. I've only talked to like two people that watch my channel. Well, four now that I've seen these two people. But no in-depth conversation. Just like, oh, hey, I see you. Got to get going. See ya. So, yeah. If you ever see me, say hi, and maybe say some more, I don't know. You don't have to be quiet. Oh well. I almost bought a car. Almost. There's been this one, I don't really need a car, but there are a few cars that I need, if that makes sense. I don't need to drive them, but there's a few cars that I really want just because they are interesting. Like I, I'd love to have a DeLorean, I'd love to have a Model T, I'd love to have like a, an old like early 1900s electric car but there's another electric car that I've been wanting for quite a while like five years or so it's called well the first version was the city car c-i-t-i -I space c-a-r and the next one was commuter car c-o-m-u-t-a car and oh here's a picture of them they're just they're so fascinating to me I love them they're so like they're like a good, a good like jump from my tricycle to an actual car, and actual car. I mean, I don't need, I do not need a big thing. I, I kind of feel like since, ever since I was like fifteen or so, I've always been pressured to get a car and get a license and stuff, and I kind of reject that and don't do do not want to just get a car just for the sake of getting a car, like everyone seems to do, and get in debt for loans and have to pay money for insurance and fuel and stuff like that. But I could definitely see myself getting. A commuter car. Well, there was one on Craigslist for $1,300. Nobody was bidding on it because he also had an eBay listing. And so I offered 900 and he said, you know what? Get back to me in a couple days and we can chat. So it's like, oh, 900 But then I saw he answered a question recently that somebody posted on the eBay listing asking about the registration. And he said that he never registered it in California and he threw away all the paperwork. It's like, well, the car is fucking useless then. Sure, I could go back to Virginia and try to get and try to track down the original like title or deed or whatever the paperwork is. But it's like, God, that's 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 like negative money worth. It's like you've got to pay it to get rid of it almost because you can't give it to a junkyard or anything like that. If I had land, I would or a place to park it. I would I would offer a hundred bucks for it or free, and I could take the motor out of it and I could like or if I had a lot of land like wooded land then I would just have like my drive it around my own land like it'd be like a an off road buggy, but yeah that's just it was so close but yet no cigar oh well it saves me the hassle of having to deal with putting a car somewhere or getting a license or whatever ah oh, well I might see about getting a license but I just don't see much need for it with my tricycle you know what I mean oh well. Well, I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!